So WrestleMania 35 has came and went. And sorry about this late review results video whatever. But I just got done watching the fucking event because it was so long. But anyway, I'm not going to go about the whole backstage and like special appearances. Okay, I'll just lay them out. Hulk Hogan makes an appearance. Hall and Nash make an appearance in the backstage segment with Michael Chi and Colin Jost. Then you have John Cena returning as the Doctor of Thugonomics when he came out to interrupt Elias. Elias and Elias. But these are, this is a results video and my opinions and my rants about the results and everything and holding myself accountable for my predictions. So without further ado, here's the results, my opinions, and even some rants about WrestleMania 35. Yeah, the kickoff show. That's one of the main reasons why the event was so damn long. This is one of the longest pay-per-views I've ever had a chance to sit down and watch and watch and watch. But first match, kickoff match, the Cruiserweight Championship. And I kind of knew that Tony Nese was going to get his time, was going to get his turn was going to emerge as Cruiserweight Champion against Buddy Murphy because Buddy Murphy has had a lengthy run as champion. So, yeah, uh, Tony Nese, man, it's just, uh, any of you feel that Tony, that Tony Nese didn't deserve it or didn't need it or wasn't his time or you're like, F Tony Nese. But I'm pretty glad that they went this route they still need a lot of work to do as far as breathing life back into the Cruiserweight division. But I hope that this match was a good start to that. Once again, I'm going to get both Battle Royals out of the way. Didn't care about them. I didn't give a fuck about them. Carmella winning the women's. It's like, come on. Carmella win the Battle Royal. They couldn't have Asuka win the Battle Royal ever since she coughed up the women's championship to Charlotte. They couldn't have her bounce back and win the Battle Royal. And the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Hmm. Okay. Colin Jost and Michael Chi almost eliminated Braun Strowman at one point. You saw the return of Harper. When I saw Harper, I was like, he couldn't win it. Andrade had a good showing until he eliminated himself. Even Apollo Crews and... Apollo Crews had a good showing. Titus O'Neil had a pretty good showing. But, of course, it went to, it went to the monster among men who could have bet against him. The main reason why I didn't predict him is because I really didn't care. But, yeah, he eliminated Colin Jost last. And it's like, that's an insult to each and every one of those wrestlers that were in there trying. Because Colin Jost and Michael Chi, they went under the ring at the end of the fucking, at the beginning of the fucking Battle Royal. I'm just like, ugh, dude, this is pathetic. And then almost eliminated Braun. But, anyway, Braun Strowman... Went from Universal Championship contender to winning an Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal that didn't really mean shit. So, the losing streak is over. And, hell, the, uh, I, I don't even know where else to go from there. Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins are now Raw Tag Team Champions by beating... The Revival. Hmm. Huh. Is that where we're going now? Um. Yeah. Wow. I, 
I'm speechless about this result. I really don't know what else to say. Yeah. Next. So Paul Heyman really didn't want to waste time since they're not going on at the end of the night. They weren't the main event. The Universal Championship match starts the main show. <laughs> okay. Seth Rollins gets attacked. Before the match begins, he gets attacked, he gets thrown around, he gets f 5 outside of the ring. Okay, um, Brock Lesnar's like, ring the bell, ring the bell. Paul Heyman's like, well, if we're done, we're going to go to Las Vegas. Alright, that's fine. The bell rings, the match goes. Brock Lesnar almost runs into the referee. And Seth Rollins, no! A kick to the face, three curve stomps later, and now we have a new Universal Champion. That's fine. At least the results were believable because of nuts! Nut shot, low blow by Seth Rollins. They gave us a hint on Monday Night Raw of what he was going to do if he got the chance to do it, but there you go. So now, they released the chokehold that Brock Lesnar had over the Universal Championship once again. And now we have Seth Rollins as Universal Champion. Good. Finally, bye-bye Brock Lesnar. For months now, we've seen AJ Styles get RKO'd all over the place. On SmackDown Live, Elimination Chamber, and so on. So for AJ Styles to actually win this match is a gift and a given, as far as I'm concerned. I like the match. It was a pretty well-paced match, and it was a pretty all-around match. It had everything in it from these two, even RKO attempts. That were saying, if he gets RKO'd again, he'll get pinned, and it's all over. But that didn't happen, because AJ Styles did get RKO'd, and kicked out of the RKO. So there you go. AJ Styles overcomes Randy Orton at WrestleMania, in a very good match. Even though, there was an RKO applied, so... Story told, there you go. The Usos overcame all the odds. You think? Were they going to give it to Rusev and Nakamura? No. Give it back to the bar? Why? Seriously? Uh, I mean, at least this took place at WrestleMania, but still. Aleister Black? And Ricochet, uh, they had, within a week, they had tag team title shots for Raw, SmackDown, and NXT Tag Team Championships. And didn't win either of them. And quite frankly, Aleister Black and Ricochet, I'm sick and tired of seeing them. I am. I'm, I'm sick of them. They just basically tried to shove them down our throats. I am sick of them. But, good thing that they didn't win the Tag Team Championships. Now, the Usos... They kept their reign. They're, they're still at the top. Whatever. Good for the Usos. And to avoid quote-unquote punishment for forfeiting against the New Day to help Kofi Kingston get his, tag, to get his WWE Championship match at this event, good for the Usos for retaining the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. got this result wrong. And I'm so fucking happy that I did. Yes! Even though Shane McMahon paid heavy prices, 
Yes, he did. But he ends up winning the match. Why? Because there was a camera platform that he got suplexed off of it by The Miz. Wow. So The Miz actually took that shot, took that chance, and actually did the suplex. Even though it was a soft landing, doesn't matter. I give props and credit where credit is due. He actually did it. He actually suplexed him from there. He actually took that high risk. So there you go. But somehow Shane McMahon actually ended on top of the Miz, which I was like, wait a minute. It's a suplex. Your arm is here and you lift someone up. And So how does Shane McMahon actually end up on top of the Miz for the pin? I, I didn't understand that. But it happened, and Shane O'Mac actually wins the match of the Falls Count Anywhere. Once again, he paid a heavy price. But finally, Shane McMahon wins a one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania for a long time. That's fine. And against The Miz, that makes it even more satisfying to me personally. Oh, Look, yes, I will say I'm biased when I am biased. But Shane O'Mac wins the Falls Count Anywhere match. And even though Miz's father got involved in more ways than one, because he was pretty much brought into it, doesn't matter. And I'm happy that I got this result wrong. As I predicted, there are only one or two teams that are going to win this. It was going to be Beth Phoenix and Natalia, or it was going to be the Iconics. And the Iconics pulled it off in the fashion that they should have. They displayed some things in the ring, but they had to do it in a sneaky way. When Beth Phoenix, this is the climax of the match, Beth Phoenix had Bailey on the second rope for the Glam Slam, and then Billy Kay is the one that made a tag that no one else really noticed. The Glam Slam was done. Peyton Royce jettisons Beth Phoenix. Bailey gets covered by Billy Kay. One, two, three. We have new women's tag team champions. There you go. The Iconics are now tag team champions. And this was a long road for them. Basically, they're like the Beautiful People remix. So why not put the belts on them? Why not? As long as they don't fuck up the whole division and as long as they don't put a male as a tag team champion, don't do that. Please, WWE, don't do that. But, once again, the Iconics are the women's tag team champions. It's like the titles were made for them, weren't they? Ladies and gentlemen, this is how it's done. This match is how it's done. As far as telling a story, roller coaster ride, leaving it all in the ring. Yes, there was the New Day and Rowan there, but they didn't attempt any shenanigans except for Rowan blocking Kofi Kingston from Daniel Bryan at one point outside of the ring, but Xavier and Big E took care of him when he got the chance, plus he got a trouble in paradise. There was no disqualifications, thank goodness. There was no count outs that was applied. And uh, this was basically a gift to Kofi Kingston in more ways than one. Good match. Once again, good storytelling. And a good result that pretty much many fans out there wanted. One of the loudest pops I've ever heard was when Kofi Kingston actually hit the crumble in paradise and actually pinned Daniel Bryan. Now, there was a moment of, oh no, when Daniel Bryan hit the knee and Kofi kicked out. Kofi Kingston was in that LaBelle lock more than once and fought out of it and or made it to the ropes. Moves were done. Again, trades. 
There were counters. Daniel Bryan was the one that had to try to thwart off Kofi. And they didn't have Daniel Bryan just lay down. Or they didn't just have Daniel Bryan squashed. This was an actual match. A good match. And pretty much for me, in my opinion, it was match of the night. It was. Result aside, everything else that they did in and out of that ring told a story. And it was kind of an old school aspect to it when they told the story. Now, Kofi Kingston, Trouble in Paradise, WWE Champion, 1, 2, 3, Celebration. And this is one of the main reasons why the match should have gone on last, because they showed everybody in the back, well, many people in the back, watching it on a monitor. They should have hit the ring afterwards and celebrated with him, but they couldn't do that because the match didn't go on last. But Kofi's family was brought into the ring. The coolest, the two coolest parts after the match was Kofi's family being brought into the ring, and then they saw Daniel Bryan's belt, and they, they took it off, and there was, a clo- there was something cloaked underneath. I was like, that's a belt, isn't it? And then Xavier Woods lifted it up, and it was the WWE Championship with Kofi Kingston's plates already on it. And I was like, yeah! The crowd even popped for that. There are even new t-shirts and merchandise for the new day. There's a new WWE Champion. Yes, it is. It's a new day. But again, great match, great storytelling, great result. Thank you, WWE, for that. Wow, just wow, a black man that was born in Africa is now WWE Champion. Wow. Got this result all wrong. Got this result all fucked up. This was basically a squash of Rey Mysterio, but maybe he couldn't perform because of his ankle injury. Maybe that was the case, so they had to make it short and sweet, which they did. And Samoa Joe, his first WrestleMania match, even though he's been there because he was injured last year, his first WrestleMania match as a champion, he goes in as a champion, he leaves as a champion. Wow, Rey Mysterio vanquished that fast. Oh well. Samoa Joe is still your United States Champion, and I got this result wrong. This was an adapt and overcoming match. This was a return of fighting something off, and then... Fighting something else off. Roman Reigns battling leukemia, kicking its ass. Comes back, gets challenged by Drew McIntyre, who basically vanquishes the other members of the Shield, and he gets rid of. He tries to get rid of Roman Reigns, but nope. Roman Reigns is the one that actually survives and actually hits his moves or whatever. His Superman punch, spear, done. Drew McIntyre, yeah, back of the line as far as trying to mess with Roman Reigns at least. And Roman Reigns beats Drew McIntyre at the biggest stage of them all. Why would you have Roman Reigns lose at this point? I, I just didn't see that happening. I'm going to make this short and sweet because I just really didn't care about the match because I knew the fucking result. Did you think that Triple H was going to lose? Did you think that Batista was going to win? And now Batista is officially retired from the WWE or in the square circle or wherever, wherever. And Triple H, yes, Shawn Michaels was guest commentator, but he didn't help. He didn't help. He didn't get up. But Ric Flair came out and fed him a freaking sledgehammer. Yes, he did. And sledgehammer, pedigree... We're done. And that's it. So, Triple H, oh yeah, yeah, he's done everything in this business except beat me. Well, not anymore. He's beat Batista now, so there you go. (laughs) 
Ah! Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Ah. Uh, yeah. I'm not happy with this result at all. Baron Corbin beating Kurt Angle, but at least it was fair, one-on-one, -on -one, no shenanigans, no interference, no weapons, no cheating, it was downright one-on-one, -on -one, and Angle just got pinned by the end of days. I guess that's fine. I'm not going to have any masterful, big rants or objections or anything like that, but I was just like, damn it! So, this is Kurt's farewell as far as WrestleMania. Uh, yeah, we're never going to hear the last of it from Baron Corbin. It's just as simple as that. Results aside, of me getting it wrong, uh, at least they let Kurt Angle speak to the fans at WrestleMania. And he didn't ride off to the sunset with a win, though. And that's what's really getting to me just a bit as a Kurt Angle fan. Damn it! Ladies and gentlemen, did anyone think that the demon was going to lose this? They basically plugged in the demon and they announced it before WrestleMania. That's what kind of, that's what really, really. I was like, look, that bothered me. They did. I was like, they should have just saved the demon to just come out at WrestleMania and then perform the same type of match. It's not like Bobby Lashley just laid down and got squashed or beat, but he did get power bombed by the demon, and then the coup de grace, and now the demon, aka Finn Balor, is now Intercontinental Champion once again. So I'm just like, that's fine. I'm not gonna complain about the match because that was the only way that it could have went about. It could have went longer, but the whole event was already long as it is. So they just needed to cut this at a certain point. Yeah, the demon. Once again, anybody out there thought that the demon was going to lose? Please, I want to hear it. So, the man is victorious by pinning Ronda Rousey. That was the only thing I was surprised about at the match. But truth be told, Charlotte was the main focus of the match as far as the carrying of the match. Yes, we all know about Becky's injury and you know how Ronda is all green and everything like that. And I think uh, a couple of reports say that she broke her hand during the match. But anyway... You have the man, Becky Lynch, now a double champion, Raw and uh, Raw Women's Champion and SmackDown Women's Champion. So this is not necessarily a merger of the titles. This this is this was just a winner take all, but I don't think this was a unification. They didn't say it was a unification. So I'm not really going to go into the match. I'm not really going to go into the specifics. But yeah, Charlotte actually carried the match on both sides for Becky and Charlotte. And, and freaking uh, Rhonda. I, I'm just right. Once again, WWE was like, this is what you want. This is what you want. This is what you want. On a lot of the matches, they were like, this is what you want. This is what you want. This is what you want. Which really impressed me about the event. With a couple of exceptions, this WrestleMania was about giving the fans a lot of what they want. So, wow to all of that. So, that's WrestleMania 35. <sighs> Damn. Kofi Kingston. The man. Seth Rollins. Got it done. I was wrong about the Seth Rollins Brock Lesnar match. Wrong. I was wrong about Kofi Kingston and Daniel Bryan. Wrong. I was wrong about those. And I'm happy to be wrong about them. I was happy about Shane McMahon winning. Happy about Shane. I got that result wrong. I was like, yes! 
The only one result that fucked me up was Baron Corbin beating Kurt Angle. I was just like, no! Damn it! But, all that aside, it was a pretty good WrestleMania. It was. It wasn't the suckiest WrestleMania. It wasn't the fuck us in the ass WrestleMania. It wasn't the dangle the carrot. Oh, uh, ah, 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 ah. No, fuck you. It wasn't like that. It wasn't a WrestleMania like that. They actually gave us what they wanted to a certain point. So, what were your picks and, and are you satisfied with the WrestleMania winners? WrestleMania 35, did you think it was a good event? Besides it being long as fuck. Do you agree or disagree with me as far as my assessment of the event or whatever? Please comment below if you're on YouTube. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, ring that bell for notifications if you're on Spreaker.com or on Apple's iTunes listening to this. Once again, thank you for joining along. So, Tampa Bay is going to be hosting WrestleMania next year. Could they follow up as far as being as good as this one? Who knows? Drop kicks, body slams, throw motherfuckers over the top rope, both feet hitting the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. This is the theme, and the theme is go. Credits.